Hi there and welcome to our next lesson in our B4 topic on It's All Green and today we're going to be following on from uh, factors that affects photosynthesis. We're going to be looking at where photosynthesis happens in leaves. Uh, what we're going to do is look at how leaves have adapted to do their job and we're going to focus on the structure of the leaf and how it actually is able to do photosynthesis effectively. Okay, so our objectives for our lesson on leaves and photosynthesis is by the end of this lesson you should know and understand the structure and function of a leaf and the role of the leaf in photosynthesis. Okay, so what we're going to do is have a look at the leaf itself and have a look at how it has adapted to be able to do its job. Now, the first thing is the colour of the leaf. Now the leaf contains something called chlorophyll which is the green pigment. Now the green pigment is not normally found elsewhere on the plant except in the leaf and this is to aid photosynthesis and to allow photosynthesis to actually happen. Now the chlorophyll will absorb lights from various different parts of the spectrum and we'll have a look at that in just a moment. The next thing you'll notice is that the leaf has a large surface area. Now the large surface area is to allow for a large or a broad amount of light to hit the actual leaf and be able to do that photosynthesis. Now the next thing you'll notice is here you've got a vein. Now the vein means that the, you've got a what we call a network of vascular bundles and what these can do is these can transport transport water to and from the leaf. It can also be used to transport glucose away from the leaf once photosynthesis has happened. Now the second thing which you can't necessarily see from this picture is the thickness of the leaf. The leaf is very thin and the thin structure means that you've got the gases such as carbon dioxide and oxygen don't have far to travel to get to and from the actual cells. Now the final thing is the stomata. Now the stomata are on the bottom part of the leaf and they're the holes or tiny pores that are en enable the gas to go in and leave the leaf. Now this is known as gas exchange within the leaf. Now chlorophyll is a pigment that gives the, uh, the leaves its green colour. However, chlorophyll is not just a pigment, it's actually a mixture of four different pigments. These pigments are chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, as well as xanthophyll and carotene. Now these pigments absorb light at different frequencies. You can see by the graph here that they absorb light at the two opposite ends of the frequency. So we've got here the violet end and then here the blue end of the um, visible light spectrum. Now you can see that the most peaks are here. Now this is where you get the green light. So we, the plant will absorb more light when it's green, hence why plants have that color green, because these pigments, the chlorophyll B, the carotene and xanophyll, and the chlorophyll all absorb light at the greener end. Now we're going to move on and look at the structure of a leaf and we've got here the, the what the actual leaf looks like and we'll go through what each of the layers is and we'll have a look at each different layer and what they do. So the first layer at the top is the upper epidermis. The second layer is the palisade layer. The third is the spongy mesophyll layer with the fourth layer being the lower epidermis. Now the top layer which is the upper epidermis it has this yellow line here. Now this yellow line is called a waxy cuticle. Now the waxy cuticle allows water or prevents water sorry from getting into the leaf. Now it not only prevents water getting in, it also prevents water getting out via evaporation. That keeps the water in the leaf so that it's able to do photosynthesis. 
Now, the epidermis cells are transparent, and that allows the light to travel straight through into the next layer, which is the palisade layer. So these cells have some chloroplasts in, but not too many. So they are able to carry out photosynthesis, but they normally let the light go straight through. Now, the second layer, the palisade layer here, this is full of palisade cells. Now, the palisade cells, you can see, are very green. Now, this is because they have a high concentration of chloroplasts which we've already spoke about is the pigment that or the pigments that allow the photosynthesis to happen. Now you can also see as well that because of their shape they're able to be tightly packed in meaning that we can get lots and lots of palisade cells all put together so that we can get a higher rate of photosynthesis. Now this is the spongy layer and you can see in here that we've got the air spaces. Now these spaces allow a gas exchange to occur. Now also within the spongy layer you have this structure here which is our vascular bundle. Now within there you have two things called xylem here and phloem. Now the xylem here is the tube that will carry water around the plant so it will transport water from the roots to allow photosynthesis to happen and then you have the phloem which will transport or relocate the sugars that are made from photosynthesis to where they are needed around the plant. Now this means that you've got the lower epidermis at the bottom. Now I'm going to remove these so we can look at just the lower epidermis. Now you've got the epidermis cells and between the gap or next to the gaps you have guard cells. Now the gaps themselves are known as stomas or a stoma for the singular or stomata which is the plural for more than one of them. Now the stoma actually means opening so here it's just an opening which is caused by the guard cells now the guard cells are able to open and close to allow carbon dioxide in and oxygen out they are also able to control the amount of water or restrict the amount of water that's lost Okay, so to review what we have looked at today, we've looked at the adaptations of the leaf and why it's green. Um, we've looked at the uh, shape of the leaf and why it's so broad to get the more sunlight. We've also looked at the, how thin it is in order to make that gas exchange really, really effective. We've also looked at the uh, different pigments that you get in chlorophyll, so chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, uh, xylophil uh, and carotene which is incidentally in carrots and makes them orange. Uh, we've also looked at the structure of the leaf and how we get the waxy layer at the top that prevents water escaping and prevents water from getting in. Uh, we've also looked at the palisade layer which is where most of the photosynthesis happens, um, the spongy layer and the bottom layer the lower epidermis which is where the gas exchange actually happens. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.